what my YouTube does. <laughs> oh, you have a YouTube channel? I think I saw your short film. Yep. Free plug. Yeah. Here we go. The short film? The you, you made monsters? A, yeah, wait, they're in a waiting room or something, and then they find out stop motion is no good anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> These people are called animators. The uh, That was a, a class project. <laughs> the, it was three of us. It took us 15 weeks to do a minute whatever it is, a minute nine. Still, I've seen some class projects like, oh, you guys need more time. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, that was decent, man. I like that. Thanks. Everything that you don't get paid on is a class project. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's all learning experience. So whose is this? Uh, that's mine. Okay, what? I was like, what is we'll, this? We'll this? get to the dice in a second. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess oh I, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll, uh, I guess I'll, I've already hit record. We've been on it for the past 50 seconds. Oh. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It makes for a great cold open. Welcome to Bonus Commentary. This is my weird little slice of the internet where we like to talk about movies. I am your host, Derek, and I am joined by two gentlemen today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, fellas? I'm Ed Radmanich. Is that how you say your last name? Radmanich. Radman Itch. Rad Radman Itch. Yes. <laughs> I, have a, I don't have a skin condition, but if I did, I would itch. <laughs> Radman might be overselling it. But hey, no. what are you talking about? <laughs> no. uh, we all work together in uh, at the... Do we talk about that? I don't know. Yeah, we can. I mean, we worked at the House of Mouse uh, a couple years ago all together. I will let you continue, Sean. He's, he was just kind enough to go ahead and shut off the fan. So that will be Sean is the hero of the podcast so far. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> I'm Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> the hero of the podcast. Um, wow, I thought I had not much to say. <laughs> uh, I'm Sean Crummel. I run a YouTube channel called Random Back Issue Comics. I review old comics and uh, provide sound effects and commentary on them. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and if you guys haven't already, make sure to go ahead and check it out. Um, oh, and my channel is Stupid Space Gun Productions. Just uh, cool. Yeah. yeah, check that one out. Uh, <laughs> I haven't updated in a while, but I will. <laughs> there we go. This will this will be the spark. This will be the thing that uh, lights a fire to you guys. Guys, we're talking about giant robots and giant monsters duking it out over major metropolitan cities. We are talking about Pacific Rim. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, that was a little that was more anticlimactic than I was expecting it to be. Um, you need like a can studio audience. Yeah. To, <laughs> oh, a button. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Kaiju! I'll, I'll make that cut. I'll, I'll put it in one of my in later episodes. Wow, it got hot quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's California, summer, we're boiling. You can adjust that fan if you need to. Just so you all know, people, the day of recording, it was like probably 90-something out there, maybe close to 100. It was 108 yesterday, I yeah. don't remember. I, I walked into Sean's house, and I looked like I just jumped out of a pool. <laughs> um, but this movie is awesome to everybody at the table for one reason or another. Uh, if you guys... Uh, Ed, I think, has the most... Yes, 2013's Pacific Rim is a awesome movie by Guillermo del Toro, who made Hellboy 2, and I, I'm not going to go into his IMDb, um, <laughs> but it's about robots fighting monsters. Um, there hasn't been a movie quite like it since, which is sad because it's, what, nine years later, six years later? Mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, I named my daughter Gypsy Danger. Danger is her middle name. <laughs> Off of this movie. Uh, can't believe I talked my wife into it, but she thought it was cool. And if we have another kid, we're going to name uh, probably Jet Jaguar because we're into the kaiju robot thing. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm voting for it right now. Right? Where, Jet, where we, do I sign? Because, yeah, Crimson Ty, Ty, Typhoon might not work as a kid's name or Striker Eureka, but Jet Jaguar is... It's, <laughs> Rolls off the tongue, so yeah. I don't know. And if, if it comes out with three arms, it might. Then maybe you get maybe you get the Crimson Typhoon. But if he comes off silver, looking like Jack Nicholson with a smile on his face, Jet Jaguar. <laughs> Deformed enough, you can name it after the kaiju's. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Knife Knife head. <laughs> Karloff he has, has a giant forehead. Nice. <laughs> and uh, Sean, well, what was your connection to this movie? Uh, I lived in San Francisco on K-Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the day the monsters attack. <laughs> yeah, uh, August, I just looked it up, I already forgot it. August. We have the, uh, we have the comic book references. Don't you love sci-fi dates that have gone by that were supposed to be the end of the world? <laughs> I have the newspaper to Back to the Future where they get arrested and stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, K-Day, no, August 10th, 2013. I was living in San Francisco. It was not a foggy day. <laughs> and from where I lived, I could have seen the monster going through the bridge. Oh, man. <laughs> there are so many things that destroy that poor bridge. Yeah. It's kind of like 
basically the Godzilla equivalent of r r running through Tokyo. It's just constantly <laughs> being destroyed and rebuilt. Unless it's 2009 Star Trek and then the drill falls right next to the bridge. And <laughs> oh, touch you it. just missed it. I was so mad. <laughs> And of course, August 29th, 1997, that's when Judgment Day happened, but uh, we're all good. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, for now. <laughs> Y2K never happened. It's because they keep resetting the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> Reset the clock! Um, and I actually remember seeing this announced, maybe not announced, but the major trailer for it dropped by Guillermo del Toro at WonderCon. And it was interesting. He was, I was maybe like 100 rows back, but I could still see the guy. He was super excited about this movie. And uh, there was a bit where he showed uh, one of the major fight sequences with Gypsy and... Um, God, we just figured out the name of that creature. Knifehead? Otachi. 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 Thank you. Sounds um, like a radio from Japan. <laughs> the Otachi. <laughs> um, and it's the bit where the uh, he hits it in the face with the, with the boat. And everybody lost their shit. And Guillermo was like, do you guys want to see that again? <laughs> and everybody lost their shoes. Like, let's go again. And like, when the lights came back on, he was throwing back a thing of tequila. I picture the one guy in the audience going, "No, we're good." Yeah, that is the one guy. He's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not satisfied yet." <laughs> but th this movie, if you haven't already, it's available for streaming on pretty much every platform for like four bucks. So it's well worth the price of admission for anybody. I, I would say. But make sure it's not rising. Yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> kind of like how Indiana Jones has a sequel we never talk about. Kind yes. of like how there are Star Wars movies we don't talk about. There's more than Return of the Jedi? Yeah, I mean, no. Nope. No. That was, no. Yeah, that was the end. 1984, no. man. That's, that's where it all stopped. Uh, there was never a sequel, and we don't talk about it. Agreed. <laughs> And the lull begins. I but the, uh, you have the graphic novel. I have not read that. How is it? The graphic novels are actually, I, I think, were pretty good. That, it, that one came out just before the movie was released. I mm. own that one. And then there's a four-issue short, uh, short series. I think it was like Back into the Breach or something, which had nothing to do with anybody going back into any breach. Um, huh. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good, that was also a good story. Was it a prequel to the... Yeah, it's, uh, it sets up the events. Yeah. It uh, it talks about San Francisco being destroyed by, you know, because in the uh, prologue, that's there the is. word. <laughs> prologue, uh, okay. He's talking about the kaiju destroying cities before they could bring it down. And uh, it also has Pentecost's sister is a fighter pilot with the RAF, and they fly in in these, like, special jets to, to destroy it. And she catches a fist to the plane. Oof. <laughs> the entire play. Yeah. But yeah, the there are comics, there are uh they're great toy we're actually sitting in front of Sean's collection of uh the kaiju and the, the mechs from the movie. And it's it's quite a great way to set up everything for this. Uh so let's go ahead and actually get into the movie. We get the I, I found this rather redundant. The definition of kaiju in a monster movie was kind of Seemed a little unnecessary. Like we get the green text at the beginning during the prologue. That's for the plebs. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, bitches. Welcome to the Shatter Dome. Uh, we get the opening narration by uh, Raleigh. 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 And uh, we get we get some great imagery. And right off the bat, we see uh, all the scale of the monsters. It do it it doesn't really set in until we get introduced to Gypsy. But we do get the sense that oh yeah, these things are pretty fucking immense and they are tearing through our planet um he announces that uh the world figures out that uh we we need this system the the jaeger program and we get some uh we get some amazing fights between giant robots and uh uh giant monsters yes yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, up until that point, we didn't really have a big robot versus monster movie of that caliber. We had uh, just got out of the Transformer movies, I think. I think we were past Revenge of the Fallen. So anything that came out, people would go, oh, it looks like a big Transformer movie. But this mm -hmm. one just changed the, the scale. Everything seemed huge. And Guillermo took that to heart. He had the rain falling it just right. He had... All the cameras set up from the bottom, so it'd be how you would see if you were looking up at something, which mm -hmm. which Transformers didn't really have. It was like we're all in the street with you guys, and 
picking up Furby trucks and whatever they did in that <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this kind of, this movie seems to have reignited uh, Hollywood's uh, realization that, oh yeah, people like giant monsters because after this, not shortly thereafter, we got the Godzilla movie, uh, 2014. But they did that wrong. <laughs> Well, see, Legendary Pictures, uh, they also released this one, Pacific Rim, and then the following year, Gareth Edwards directed uh, the Godzilla reboot, and I was at the WonderCon for that, and everybody was excited, having probably just seen Pacific Rim, so we were expecting, and the scene he showed us was like they were at the airport, ready to battle, not knowing yep. that when we actually saw the movie a year later, they cut away to a news camera footage or something, you <laughs> never even saw the cool fights. That, uh, yeah. not to be graphic, but that movie was just two hours of blue balls until the end <laughs> and then the end you're like oh thank god this is what i've been waiting for mm -hmm. but like oh my lord i was like if you if you're following up pacific rim these guys need to be fighting constantly yeah um and i feel like they they did that better uh, in a later iteration of the movie the king of the monsters but we'll get into that on a later podcast uh so we get the we get the jaegers kicking the crap out of all the kaiju um, we're introduced to Riley, uh, Riley and his brother, um, who will not stay around for very long. Yancey. Uh, Yancey, that's right. <laughs> who the heck? No wonder these guys were good at fighting. They had the most unconventional, this boy named Sue, squared. <laughs> Even with that name, you can't turn that into a cool nickname. No. Wait, Yan? Yan Yan. <laughs> Yan. <laughs> Yan Yan is the, the his little bread sticks with chocolate on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we get a... Uh, we get them suiting up and getting into um, getting into Gypsy, and there's that just excellent guitar riff. Um, the same guy who did um, Game of Thrones actually did the soundtrack. Really, that song. Whenever I have something stuck in my head, like an annoying pop song, mm. I default to the Pacific Rim theme to try and get it out <laughs> yep. of my head. <laughs> Imagine a little Mac pilot in your head. Mm. <laughs> uh, um, we also get introduced to. Uh, Idris Elba's character Pentecost at his Idris El Elbriest. Um, <laughs> That's hard to say. Yeah, it was really hard to say. <laughs> I wrote it down, but I didn't anticipate that it was going to be so hard oh, to this say. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> uh, it'll be funny. It was funny for the wrong reason. <laughs> um, we get we get a lot that happens in that first ten minutes. We get introduced to the drift, Gypsy. Um, when they actually pull Gypsy out into the hangar. You actually get like little people, like and giant, uh, giant machinery, and then we see Gypsy's giant foot. So we get like this real, we get a real like uh, escalating scale of how big this thing truly is. Something interesting about this movie: it takes about twenty minutes before we even see the title card. That was interesting. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Down. We, Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. Um, I was also going to say the same thing. Like uh, CinemaSins, the, one of the things they do is they they mock how long it takes to get to the actual movie. This got in like real quick. I think it was like two cards. I can't even remember them anymore. <laughs> there was one thing I really hated about the sequel is it took like a half hour before you actually see them fight anything. Ugh. And I, I after we watched it, I put on this one and I was counting. I was like, it's like three minutes. <laughs> Well, I mean, that movie sounded like it was doomed from the get-go. Once once Del Toro was like, nah, dude, I think I'm good. That's so sad. Yeah. And we've learned if if you're producing, it's not the same as directing James Cameron. <laughs> He's always like, no, this Terminator is going to be great. Yeah, I'm producing it this time. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said that about the last one, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it. Um, we then get to the uh, knife head fight. Which is, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a great way to set everything up. Uh, but unfortunately, Gypsy gets a knife through the shoulders and the brother. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and through the brother. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we uh, humanity starts losing. So the uh, Jaeger program is cut after five straight years of losses. Uh, they also do another great mont, very brief montage of all like the robots and utter destruction, and um, so they decide, you know, we're just gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna build some walls, and that ends up not working very well. Um, Something about this movie that's interesting is they don't go with the origin stories because 
Lord knows we've seen enough of those, and it would take a long time to get to the point where you see the cool action. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like get thrown into the like this is the heat of it. This is where it was like the best going on right now. Then the movie starts, and it's kind of like, all right, well, this is what happened where we all got to the end of the point where we don't have the good stuff anymore. <laughs> Shit starts to... getting whack. It's the third act of a trilogy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this was our uh, Return of the Jedi. Um, maybe not so much. Uh, Striker Eureka takes out uh, Striker Eureka is the Australian mech and it's supposed to be the fastest and um, has one of the clunkiest Australian accent lines I think I've ever heard it's, just, it's a new record <laughs> yeah something in 2019 also that's not interesting is that we're kind of getting past the point of using accents because well people don't want to be wrongly using a demographic or accent anymore so like it, for instance the HBO Chernobyl it takes place in Russia, but everybody was just speaking with English, English, English accents. accents. Oh, are you but everybody, serious? yeah, but everybody was fine with it because it's you're watching the drama. That's the important part, not the them trying to be a bad accent. Because mm. then you'll just notice the ah, oh, I'm trying to do a Russian accent. Yeah, thing. comrade it is. They, it works, man. It works. The only it's, time they ever uh, drop into a Russian accent is when they actually pronounce someone's name or location. Well, yeah. And then it goes back into, like, a full posh... Well, maybe not posh, but definitely a British accent. That's a series, right? Yeah, it's that, a miniseries on HBO. That just makes me think of, like, endless episodes of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we get... Um, after, after the wall is basically shown to be a terrible idea, Pentecost shows up to rally who is working on the wall and we get some great imagery of like him just he's just kind of hanging out on what looks like a half pipe maybe or, so, or something <laughs> but it looks amazing for some reason that shot is just gorgeous to look at there's a lot of detail and everything it's beautiful um a lot of background and, uh set design oh yeah yeah uh good attention to detail we also get introduced uh a little later on we get uh introduced to uh, Mako who uh, <laughs> that's one of the things that I, I remember from Guillermo's uh, sit down with everybody was he was talking about how great uh, I believe her name is Ryoko Kuchki was as uh, Mako she was the only actor who wouldn't complain about getting in the Jaeger suit and in the Jaeger get up because they had they um they had resistance when they would like pull, throw their punches and everything and they were held in place they were on the ellipticals and then they would be tossed around in those <laughs> like uh, star trek-esque fashion but they were held in place and they were still trying to act and everybody was according to uh, delta horror uh everybody was bitching and moaning except her she was the only one who was like get back and be like let's go again <laughs> let's go again it's like a ride yeah <laughs> she was she was a little badass on set um, she was just she was honestly one of my favorite characters in the movie I think I think if you have the opportunity to be in that involved in that kind of a project that I can't imagine no reason to complain yeah, I, yeah you're too immersed to care I yeah. can't imagine not having fun doing something like that but then again I'm not in a suit I'm not being tossed around and having water dumped on me and I don't care that'd sparks. still be fun <laughs> yeah oh yeah at the end of the day I'd still like look at my life and go I've made some right decisions here <laughs> um we get introduced to that uh, the Shatter Dome set when they're walking through, um, and just how truly immense it is. It, uh, we actually notice um, there was an echo when Idris Elba was uh, explaining how things worked around there, but it's so immense that we weren't sure that the echo would actually like hit any wall to reverberate back to them. Then I realized that it's Idris Elba, so he's probably emoting so hard, it's probably hitting the wall and coming back to them. <laughs> he's just so manly. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever walked down the street and somebody's talking to you, but they're not facing you, you can't hear what they're saying. And, and Idris Elba is always like 20 feet ahead of him <laughs> talking, and he's like in an echoey giant warehouse. How is he going to hear any of that with all the construction and noises going on, cars going by? I'm sure it's like the uh, the NASA hangar where they build mm -hmm. the the rocket, uh, the space shuttles and stuff. Where they have their own like weather system because it's so big in there. <laughs> it just starts raining. I don't know. Microclimates. Yeah, yeah, that would be. I would actually like to see. I want to see a movie on the Shadow Dome now. <laughs> uh, we get introduced to the other uh, the other giant robots, uh, Crimson Typhoon, Cherno Alpha. Uh, Crimson Typhoon is the mech that has. Uh, three arms on it and it's known for its thunder wave thunderclap technique 
uh, you know, that doesn't actually go anywhere later. Spoilers. Um, and Cherno Alpha, which is the... Just in case you're wondering what those noises are, Sean's it's playing, me. playing yeah, with Sean, one of the Sean's toys. playing with one of his he's toys. He's playing with the toy. He's got, <laughs> he's got it in combat position. I'm posing Gypsy. <laughs> um, I was trying to be discreet. <laughs> <laughs> These mics probably picked it up. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> but we have... Um, I feel like Cheerto Alpha is kind of the Boba Fett of this movie. Like, it's so visually pleasing it has no lines or anything but dear god there's a lot of story that is just it has one line ah! <laughs> <laughs> some sort of acid <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um and the the way that the robot is, looks is actually looks like it's holding it looks like a small person is holding a giant nuclear reactor <laughs> yeah, it looks like over a its head chernobyl nuclear reactor yeah with arms and legs <laughs> i would be so okay with it like if there's lore that is later mentioned that is actually like a part of the Chernobyl <laughs> tube. It leaks radioactivity. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got one of my notes here is uh, we're introduced to um, well, we're not introduced. We've, we've met them a couple of times already, but uh, Charlie D's character and uh, Newt and I honestly cannot tell you his name, but the super smart brainiac guy. Herman. Herman. I made it a point to remember it because I always <laughs> you forget it. Down in your notes. Yeah, he, his name is kind of forgettable, but he's the nerd. <laughs> he's, he's the. Um, and only through the subtitles on did I learn that his last name was Gottlieb or Gottlieb, like the yeah. company? Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. Gottlieb. Herman Gottlieb. Um, there's a bit where he's explaining like how the kaiju, like they're the, the schedule that they're on is like oh, six weeks turns into, or 12 weeks turns into six, turns into blah, blah. blah. And he's got this giant chalkboard filled out with mathematical equations. And he's doing simple... He's basically doing simple math here. Why does he need so much chalkboard? I'm still fuzzy on how math predicts when an animal is going to attack. <laughs> um, I, I actually really like the the relationship those two characters have. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Day's character, Newt, and... Uh, Herman. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it down in my notes, okay? I'm sorry. Well, Charlie Day has such a unique voice, it's, and compared to Herman, who's kind of a, you know, introvert nerd kind of character, so you have like, hey man, we gotta do this, because oh my god, this is gonna happen! The whole time he's like that, the whole movie. I'll be that perfectly honest. Amazing. Yeah, no, that was great. <laughs> How many times have you seen this movie that you can replicate Charlie? Hey, dude, Charlie Day, what are you guys talking about? Oh my god! <laughs> Stop it. It's like he's in the room. That was unexpected. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready what for that. What a white male with a kaiju! <laughs> <laughs> no! Stop it, Ed. <laughs> this is great. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, oh, there's a, there's, there was another thing we had to, I had to make a note of. Um, there, are, there are parts of this movie which is this loud, roaring, uh, giant Please. monster. Yeah. Uh, battle sequences, but when people talk, they whisper. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I have it. I have it literally written as, "Oh dear God, they're so quiet." I had to. We had to turn the subtitles. There is some unwritten rule for DVD players and Blu-ray players that there is no conformity as far as the sound. So all the action scenes and most of your great movies will be like explodingly loud, where you have to turn it up to. You got to turn it down because it's so loud, it's making your house shake. But then when they start talking, it's like, okay, so now we're gonna have to move over here. Okay, yeah. I really feel what you're talking about right now. But it's like, do they not realize we're going to have to adjust? We have to have the remote in our hands at all times. So you go, oh, turn it up, turn it down. Oh, turn it up, turn it down. It's I feel like it wasn't always like that. Like, yeah. I you, feel like it's Sony's master plan to sell you a sound bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, VCR has never had this issue. But since we went to 5.1 surround sound and everything, I think that's uh, the norm is to mess with you. <laughs> Make you buy more equipment. It is amazing that we... Um... I lost my train of thought. I burped. Sound bars. <laughs> Sound bars. Herman. Herman. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Get it together. It's your podcast. Um, yeah. We, um, it's gone again. Yeah, no, no, no. I got, I got it right here. I got it right here. The schoolyard cafeteria sequence. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was particularly weird. It, it, it felt like a bunch of adults being teenagers. I mean, I... Sean pointed out that it was obviously so that way when uh, we get the redemption arc from that particular character, 
he wouldn't feel so much like a clone. But well, set it up. He, it's yeah. a, it's the terrible one line Australian. Yep. Giving crap to Charlie Day, he just showed up, and uh, not Charlie if, Day. <laughs> you must establish not Charlie Day. The other day, the other guy. Yeah, Charlie. It was another Charlie. Uh-huh. I think his name is also oh, Charlie. Yeah, nobody Riley. knows his name. Riley. Riley. There we go. He's giving crap to Riley, and uh, what's his name? He's. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Australian accent guy. He's Soon basically a clone of, of Riley, and if you didn't have him have some kind of personality, he would just be there for no reason. So it was a character development point. That's there why you go. Needed that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody there needs to accomplish something; otherwise, cut their character out of it. That's true. Um, we established that Gypsy needs a co-pilot because brother is dead. So uh, Riley is basically in charge of hosting. I guess you can call it tryouts. Tryouts. Tryouts, training. Um, and M- M- Mako really wants to get in on this, but uh, Pentecost won't let her. But she has this great moment where she set, she does so much acting in such a small amount of time where she like, where he's like, I want to fight her. And she looks up to Pentecost and she's got this great look on her face like, let me kick his ass. <laughs> like, uh, like if a dog looked up to you and went, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> almost a sound you could hear through her. Yeah, practically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's so well done. Um, she kicks it. They kick each other's asses. Like they, I think they stay tied throughout the entirety of the thing. Um, and they they give this will they won't they choose her as the pilot and eventually they let her have it. Um, let's see. We also have the. Uh, am I going too fast? Is there anything you guys wanted to throw in here? <laughs> well, I mean, during that martial arts scene, they never did establish any other contender that we're going to think, maybe he's going to be the pilot. So it was just Mako and that's it. Yeah, they get the... Uh, I'm sorry, what were you going to say? No, go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say that they have, they have the um, Crimson Typhoon team, but... Oh, that was do, them? That yeah, was them. why would you I split them up? random guys. They know yeah. the Thunderclap technique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, never get, I never got that. Yeah, it's it's the four of that. It's a, apparently, they won four matches with him or something, and he like as we go in on that shot, he starts winning points again, because it starts at like four zero and then four one, four two, four three, and he beats them every time until she comes in and kicks his ass, and then it's one one, two two, three three. So you're saying this is just one of those scenes to establish Mako's going to be in it, but we just want to see them yeah, spar it, a little bit, and it does. It, now that I think about it, it does kind of eat up a little bit of time, but. Not not a horrible amount. Like it, if you pick apart any movie enough, you'll see some flaws. I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's the entire basis of cinema sins. Where, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, uh, there were a lot of there was a lot of talk when this movie came out about it being simplistic and stuff, and I'm like, it had to be, and I'm I'm completely fine with it. Like everything was very predictable, but it was so much fun to watch, and uh, everything in the movie was an homage. To something that came before. Yeah. The sword later on in the movie is totally different. My totally family. Japanese. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's every anime, anime I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> elbow rockets. Oh yeah. I still want elbow rockets. <laughs> um, but it was it was a very straightforward, easy to understand script, and I think that's why it it did so well. I agree. I loved it. I loved every second of it for probably that reason. Is it is simple. It, it doesn't really need to add to too, too much. Um, so Mako gets in the uh, uh, gypsy. They go in their training and uh, they're doing a uh, training exercise with it. And sh- she remembers she gets caught in the drift, chasing the rabbit, and uh, remembers her uh, her tragic backstory again, very anime, uh, um, where her, her entire family, her entire city was destroyed by a kaiju attack as and she's this little girl uh, being chased through Tokyo and this giant crab creature running through the streets right after her it was it's a, again the visuals very stunning like you remember it it kind of does crabs are effing terrifying yeah, they, just, they are weird looking well this this does establish more of the neural net stuff and I was going to ask you guys a question any of you have seen and I'm not sure how to pronounce this correctly Evangelion Evangelion oh it, uh, yeah now, isn't uh, there some kind of neural net thing in that, and that's where they kind of borrowed that from? Probably. Probably. Uh, I, I haven't actually seen it. I, I know of it. I know... I've seen, like, one or two episodes. I know the ending is just 
I watched one or two movies, but it doesn't retain enough in my brain that I was like, <laughs> did they use a neural net thing? I swear. There's some, because I know Guillermo was talking about borrowing from everything, and I think that was something somebody mentioned that was heavily borrowed. Like, you connect physically, mentally with the robot you're in. That, that makes, makes sense. Yeah, it definitely holds up. I just assumed that they needed a reason for why you needed two people to be in it and combine, like, Voltron. So. Yeah, I like that. That was cool. That was that was a fun touch. Uh, so it turns out that uh, Newt has an idea about how to uh, further go on with the uh, with the plan to take out all the kaiju. Um, so he mind melds with one of them using the same drift technology that the Jaeger pilots use, and he uh, he figures out that they are all clones. And what does that mean for us? And um, he needs a full kaiju brain because he only has access to like a fragment of one. It's got this funny little octopus gag where it's like constantly tapping on the uh, on the outside or the inside of the uh, the glass. One of the best things about the tech in the movie, it, and it's like any good science fiction stuff, like stuff from the 80s, is that you don't have any idea how it works, but you feel like it could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and even in the comic, I, I was finishing it last night because I had to read it for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, wow, this seems really believable, and, and it's total, utter nonsense. Oh, of course. So. Well, that's the problem with modern technology and basically being able to look up anything on the Internet. There's no mystery of stuff. Back then, computers were kind of mysterious to everybody, so it kind of worked out, like 80s, 90s movies, like time travel, back to the future. And just think of some of the best movies from that time, and it was the tech was always like, yeah, okay, sure. But on top of that, people who watch those movies will go, I'm going to make that tech happen. So a lot of the <laughs> stuff they saw was molded after from the, some of the best cinematic movies we've had in the 80s and 90s. So, Oh, yeah. Still no, waiting we, on a proton pack. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, give me another few Rocketeer movies and we can get a, a rocket packs for everybody. Still that like, would be... I'd still like to see some ghosts in real life, you know? That's <laughs> something I've never proven. Never disproven. We gotta, we gotta build the proton pack to up the stakes to make them want to defend themselves. <laughs> yeah, right. Themselves. <laughs> well, the ghost war. Well, look what we have now. <laughs> we're still a better, pro still a better plot than what we got. But like, while we were talking about the the cool tech and stuff, I was, you were talking about when he mind melded with the uh, the kaiju, mm. and I want to ask you guys: Have you seen a sequel that helped soil something from the great original film, as the sequel did for me when? The mind meld with that character, the uh, Charlie's Remember, character. These movies, that, the thing you're talking I know, about is, is a hypothetical I can't and doesn't not exist. Think of that now. I'm like, oh. See, Hollywood, this is what you do to us when you make crappy sequels. For people who don't know, Derek I'm, almost threw up. Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to have to tell you. Okay, in the sequel, okay. he mind melded with the aliens or the, the kaiju to the point of a possible gross relationship or something in the sequel mm. that he became one with them and it's the whole kind of plot of the second movie mm -hmm. don't see it i ruined it for you it's, but <laughs> now spoilers is it really ruining if it's a bad movie exactly but the first movie it's, i'm always gonna think of that now I'm like oh that music was playing in the background and all that stuff oh. all right i'll stop <laughs> <laughs> I think I blocked out so much of that movie that it doesn't exist for me anymore. Apparently, it causes a gag reflex in me. Who knew? Um, let's let's talk to something that doesn't suck. Is yes. uh, Ron Perlman as Hannibal Chow? <laughs> he was so great as not Hellboy in this. Like it, we haven't at this point, we hadn't seen him out of the Hellboy suit in a quick minute. So seeing him like out and about, he's got like he's covered in garb. Like uh, his shoes have like these weird little. The, golden flakes the gold on plates, him. yeah. Yeah. And Run how he got his name. Did you remember that? Yeah, it's uh, his favorite fictional character and his second favorite... Historical character, <laughs> Hannibal. <laughs> and his favorite... Szechuan restaurant. Szechuan. Yeah. <laughs> in, in Brooklyn? In Brooklyn, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's got, he's got the brain... He's got the full functioning brain Charlie Day needs in order to progress the plot. Yeah, his character is like a black arms dealer who steals all the use pieces of a dead kaiju and stuff and they kind of put that in to good use <laughs> and then there's just like a there's an orgy of practical effects going on like oh, there yeah. there's this big cuticle that they're working on and little Charlie parasites Day's nerding out about everything it's uh so fantastic to watch you like kaiju bone powder yeah. no why would i want that <laughs> It makes a potent yang yeah <laughs> for some reason he lifts up his boobs like <laughs> um there's actually, uh, we go back to um, 
Mako's uh, history. And there was actually something I remembered during the sequences. Um, during filming, the little girl who played little Mako. Um, Adorable. Yeah, she was great. Couldn't pronounce Del Toro, or couldn't pronounce Guillermo Del Toro's name. Hmm. Um, and he, she was trying to be respectful, but she couldn't get the words out. So she went with the nickname that she had given him behind his back and called him Totoro-sama. And totally, and when Guillermo heard about this, he's like, you can totally call me Totoro-sama, and it is totally respectful. So <laughs> what does that mean? He's the, my the neighbor Totoro. Oh, Totoro. Yeah. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> what is that? The scale is accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Practically. Um, there's, a, there's a great picture of it. He's a big huggable kitty. <laughs> <laughs> where there's a picture where he's, she's like, holding an umbrella and she's looking very meek and shy next to del toro who's at least got a stomach on her like mm. tall mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so funny um but yeah it turns out that pentecost was the person that was flying the jaeger that beat the uh crab monster beat the crab monster in japan <laughs> it has a name they all have names they all have names i don't know if it's listed in this one i'm but... cra crabaroo <laughs> Kabaru. <laughs> no, it'd probably be some... No? I don't know. Some of those names, like Karloff, I'm like, okay, just because his face kind of looks like it, I guess. And what was <laughs> that? Bell Bob? Bellow Bob? Yeah. It's better that they didn't have names. <laughs> well, they all have, like, code names. Yeah. And it's Knifehead and Trespass. Oh, Tachi and... Yeah. So, after... Right. Um, we After that whole sequence, we move along to the breach opening, and uh, they need to scramble the Jaegers and we get the the big uh, middle fight of the entire movie honestly probably one of the best fights of the entire movie feels like it lasts a long time and it's not boring every shot is fantastic it's a solid 7 to 10 minute action set piece that other movies should learn from it's true <laughs> uh, unfortunately Cherno Alpha gets knocked out pretty quick and so does uh very sad. The, yeah, the the typhoon. Um, yeah, it goes that. They have what was that thing you said? He sucks at monkey. In a... Oh, when they're in the shatter <laughs> dome, they show the the pilots for the crimson typhoon, and they're playing basketball. Oh, but yeah. the, the one guy is like basically monkey in the middle, and he can't get the ball. And I was like, I don't know if I trust those guys. <laughs> See, I feel like that's what happened to him out in the ocean because when they're surrounded <laughs> by several kaiju and they yeah. couldn't get yeah. out of it, they get they get that shadowing. Yeah. <laughs> They get that. Uh, they get a couple of good hits in, but it doesn't actually do anything. So mm -hmm. why are they famous for this technique? I don't <laughs> understand. Um, Realistically, it could work if you could hook up several pilots that have multiple limbs. You could throw the kaiju off. It would change your whole style. It'd be like playing the piano with the sixth finger. <laughs> I would. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. <laughs> I'd they just suck at it. Yeah. yeah, they need to learn it on the courts before they take it to the streets. <laughs> monkey. That's why they were practicing monkey in the middle. One guy was just, <laughs> the reason they died is because that one guy was slacking. It really was. Um, the uh, the Australian mech striker Eureka gets hit with an EMP and is basically rendered useless throughout most of this fight. Um, and <laughs> there's a great bit where they're um, they're getting jostled around and. The one of the pilots is like, "Hang on, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect." And immediately upon disconnect, he gets the the entire ship gets bumped a little bit, and it throws him like eight feet in the other direction, slamming into a wall, breaking his arm, making him useless. <laughs> but um, yeah, it never happens again. But then it, his son does the same thing, and he's fine. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> immediately after he's saying, "Oh, don't disconnect," he disconnected, and he was fine. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, it's up to Gypsy now. Gypsy's the last Mac standing for the most part, and they fly her in, and they have the fight with the with the weird gorilla EMP monster. I love that guy. Yeah. I always forget his name. <laughs> He's an expensive Herman. Expensive. <laughs> expensive. <laughs> um. And I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm 30 year old, 31 year old man, and I got chills when I watched Gypsy charge headlong, jump into the air, and punch that thing in the face. Oh my god, it was so satisfying to watch. You need to watch the movie loud. Loud? And big. Loud and big. L loud and big? 
watch the movie? I'm I'm familiar. Oh yes, okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were making a movie title. Well, to <laughs> but yes, add to no. your point about. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a movie. Uh, that you were saying. Loud you need, big. To, you need to watch. My brain translated that into you need to watch the movie loud and big. So yeah. I was like, I don't. Think I don't I've heard know of this, this movie. One. <laughs> make a note. That's something uh, to add to your uh, getting chills thing that they don't really do anymore in any movie that I've seen in the past year. You want a satisfying action scene where you actually audibly make a noise or something and then like, oh my God, I didn't think that was going to happen. I actually I can't talk about the other movie I saw that that happened recently in, but it still happens, but they used to do it all the time. And that's why we love these movies because they would have moments where you're just like taken aback by the the sheer like satisfying, like you said, with the getting punched in the face. I don't know something about that. Like that guy's bad. We didn't want to see him get punched in the face. He yeah. killed Cherno Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> also, what you were saying about soundtracks, they don't do good soundtracks anymore. It's very rare to get a good score that actually like just you want to buy that soundtrack as soon as you leave the movie because it, yeah, it, it gets you ramped up for a scene. Like and this worked twofold because you have the action music and then he punches him in the face all at the right time. I just think of so many movies that used to do that. <laughs> I can watch a commercial that has a good song on it, and I will tear up. <laughs> like music slays me. Um, now I shouldn't tell you this, but I show my three-year-old daughter stuff that you know you shouldn't show a three-year-old, but she likes it, and she. <laughs> That's what I told when you. she goes, Daddy, <laughs> is the Terminator okay? And I'm like, Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, it's a tear. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> she shouldn't be watching Terminator, but still. I mean, I guess we kind of, I guess we kind of got raised the same way, but I guess it was, it wasn't unacceptable at that time. My that was for, all we had. My love for mm. monster movies came from episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000, where they would play old monster movies and giggle and snort at those. Mm. Um, Stuff on, you only had three channels back then on Fox 40 at night or whatever. You'd have your X Files, and kids shouldn't be watching that, but they don't want to go to bed, so they're watching like the. The, the oil thing going in the eyes and stuff and it's terrifying the kids we grew up fine <laughs> <laughs> except for this twitch yeah, yeah. I can't go near yeah. oil or vinegar or any of that stuff anything <laughs> the, uh, the fly came out I think in 87 oh wow yeah yeah I yeah. was 6 and I saw that at the drive-in <laughs> oh jeez Cronenberg is yeah. it yeah that's Whoa. another thing when you went to the drive-in it was 6 to 8 screens and if you were a little kid you were in the backseat and you're always looking around at other screens and there was always terrible R-rated movies on you're watching whatever Care Bear movie or something but <laughs> the sound is Care Bears but what you're seeing is Cronenberg you know Jeff Goldblum <laughs> falling apart and whatnot. <laughs> vomiting on right. a guy's arm. Yep. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Um, let's check for a pulse is my note here. Uh, that, that So they beat the they beat the gorilla monster um, and they turn around and just blow it to shit just to make sure that it is absolutely dead. It's so dead, in fact, that they can't use any... That the black market can't use any more pieces. They, they go for... Uh, Otachi again, later. Again, this was satisfying. Yes, it was very. It was a lot of fun to watch. It's nice to see his torso collapse in on itself. Yeah, a little bit of fireball go off. Right Probably enough to like erupt the city street. <laughs> uh, let's see what I have here. Might my next note. Uh, okay, so because they it, they figure out that because uh, Newt knows how the kaiju work, that they're they're. They're after him specifically. There's a, there's a bit where he's in a like a kaiju bunker shelter for uh, for everybody, and he starts panicking, and everybody starts panicking with him. And like, quick, get him out, get him out! Uh, but it comes in, goes looking for him. Uh, but fortunately for him, Gypsy shows up, and yet another amazing fight sequence happens. Uh, this is the scene that you saw at WonderCon with the baseball boat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Comes just dragging it through the city streets. It's just this giant tanker that must be like half mile long. And they're just dragging behind him and just smacking him in the face. Beats him down. With oh. The... Satisfying. Satisfying. <laughs> uh, kind of blowing through this fight here because it's hard to describe an action sequence. We are just discussing it. Just amazing set design uh vibrant colors i mean if there's ever a scene that describes the entire movie it's pretty much this one everyone's seen that scene even if they haven't seen the movie yeah it's nice the way they uh they handled the buildings it was nice to see them crumpling it's, like you never see that in a giant monster movie yeah and it's raining so god just yeah so much detail um 
and that was another thing that a lot of these buildings did in fact feel practical mm -hmm. like uh, uh, there was actually the bit where uh, Gypsy goes for a swing but misses and goes through a building and that's all shot practically there's there was a there must have been like three months of production of them building all those little cubicles and everything only for this like maybe like three second gag where a fist is going through a building and t taps some like gravity clackers. I thought you were joking about that being practical. Oh no, that's <laughs> that's one of the practicals. <laughs> and again, great. all of those shots, uh, other than that practical one, were shot from ground level, so you're getting the scale of these giant robot monster fights. Just uh, yeah, everything's shot from like a low angle. A low angle. Yep. Yeah. Um, Which they didn't do in the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> if you want Power Ranger looking, that's what you go for. <laughs> We don't mention the sequel. <laughs> this is what happens. Um, so uh, Gypsy fights and beats the shit out of this thing, but it it's only its first form. Uh, <laughs> they <Sorry. you> know, <laughs> spoiler. spoiler. <laughs> hey, I gave I gave my due. I told people to go see this movie. It's up to them now. Yeah, it's six only years. Been out for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a great bit where <laughs> they are. Uh, the Otachi grows wings and starts to pick up Gypsy and like smash smash it into the tops of buildings on purpose, it's, no less. It's so it's so great, it, and you can almost look with again. It's a monster, so it's not giving lines or anything, but it you could feel it saying "fuck you" every time it slanted <laughs> into a wall. It's like that's for taking my tail, you piece of shit, and my acid esophagus. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they eventually use. The uh, the sword, spoiler, that, yeah, that is that is built into Gypsy, and rip this thing's wing off. Again, very satisfying. They plummet to Earth, and land directly in the middle of a baseball stadium and do seemingly dick for damage as far as like. <laughs> yeah, there'd be a significant crater. A significant crater, and you know the actual robot itself would probably be good and mangled well, that's what they that's why they were shooting the jet out of the chest to slow it down so right then it could land and that's right they they do the they re, they release a little bit of reactor power they techno babble yeah, their way out of that right. situation again don't think about it too much people a, a lot of a lot of the movie does feel like it's using techno babble to its advantage but that's just it is it's using it to its advantage and it, it, you don't care you're just like big thing falling from sky using rocket well, makes sense. <laughs> Earlier on, one of the big plot points is the kaiju uses an EMP to knock out all the digital version uh, <laughs> robots. <laughs> but Ed's favorite line. But Gypsy is analog, so that why it's okay. Analog just shows up, and it's a nuclear reactor inside her, apparently. Wait, so what were the uh, what were the the newer models running on? Because she was a, a nuclear reactor. That's why. Tesla stuff. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> Digital. Oh man, if Elon Musk just decided to stop making cars and start making robots, Giant I robots. would I would invest. I would invest so hard. I think you could convince him of that. Uh, you know, the new Tesla Mecca. Yeah. <laughs> People would buy it. I would. I would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No more traffic. Can you put me on a payment plan for like a billion years? <laughs> uh, we find out that uh, the Otachi kaiju that got beat up in plummeted from Earth's atmosphere is actually pregnant. Uh, and that's the full brain that Newt is able to use. Um, but they figured this out before. Uh, well, they figured this out after uh, Hannibal gets eaten. Um, and it turns out that they fi uh, they find out that the way to defeat this creature, the, the, the whole situation, is to have a kaiju corpse uh, to go floating with them through the through the breach uh, that they need to detonate in order to make everything go away. Um, wow, that was a real that seemed... cliff note version of that movie. That's yeah, so... uh, you know, it <laughs> that felt painful. It was, uh, there was a lot that happened. There was a lot of exposition that happened in that bit. They need a genetic <laughs> signature to go through the breach. Yep. Yes. They need the uh, the retinal scan. <laughs> the, the thumbprint, the, <laughs> eye, <laughs> the eyeball, the, all, all four. The uh, face recognition. Yeah. A rectal map. Again, don't think about it too hard, people. <laughs> yeah. Again, techno babble saves the day. Um, we get the bit with uh, Idris Elba getting into his, his Independence Day his, speech, his, getting into a suit, <laughs> doing the cancel the apocalypse. You his, know, sorry. The, uh, when I first saw the trailer, I thought he was saying 
we are cancer in the apocalypse. And I was like, that is badass. <laughs> and I swear, I'm the only one that thought that for like months. <laughs> We are cancer in the apocalypse. And then everyone kept saying, canceling the apocalypse. And I'm like, that doesn't sound this cool. What are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Eat. I was wrong. Uh, um, <laughs> sorry. I can cut this out. <laughs> what? Uh, the dead air. Oh. And um, we get the final battle for the breach where they strap a... What did you say? Like... 200 ton 200, megaton yeah like nuclear weapon a there big was. big big fucking nuke strapped Super to the back bomb, of yeah, yeah nukes uh, and tons <laughs> nukes and tons that was on striker though right yeah it was on striker um but they encountered their first category five which is this finger of god yeah giant <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Did you just do a Twister reference? I wasn't ready for a Twister. <laughs> Charlie Day and a Twister reference. Why are you? Why am I doing the podcast? What? I I don't understand the naming conventions because usually when you have a hurricane, you name it like you go by the alphabet, mm. and I think they switch back and forth between male and female names. So like Katrina, for, mm. you know, yeah. when they get to that. Sandy. So these they're like Karloff, Otachi, <laughs> and they just happen to match the design of the monster as they come out. It kind of, yeah, I feel like they needed to explain that. Well, maybe not. I don't no, know. No, don't. because but analog it's, digital is it's, it's a database. It's already pre. pre it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, short version. Uh, they detonate uh, the bomb so that way that Gypsy can get in and use her nuclear reactor inside the breach. Um, saving the day. Saving the day. But that uh, that sequence where they where they detonate the first bomb, and it's so massive it actually causes like <laughs> does it sucks it, all the water out. Yeah, it does it suck it out or does it vaporize it? It must have vaporized it because of the amount of heat required. But the fish were still there. Oh. They, have, they have fresh fish. They showed like waves of sand flying. That's true. I think that's it just that's like, true. made a bubble. And then the bubble contracted back, and that's when he got like, sucked the amount back. of the amount of heat pushed the water away, yeah. and then then the ocean comes flying back and would have destroyed them. But we're okay with that. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know, again, techno babble saves the day. <laughs> the amount of pressure the water has, or the ocean has, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're already here. Um, Robots versus monsters, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm perfectly fine with not over analyzing yeah. movies yeah. as much as I used to when I was younger. <laughs> Yeah, my, my note for that was just things go boom. <laughs> Satisfying. Uh, yeah, they make their way through the breach using the Category 5's corpse. <laughs> which Sorry. Is, no, it's great. It's just, they, they kind of do the um, the Austin Powers scene where he's falling, through the, falling out of the skyscraper. He's just kind of like, uh, and I just shifts the body underneath. Yeah, like the Austin Powers thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just like the, when you can say that you're using a corpse for for another purpose yeah. other than being a corpse. It makes me laugh. <laughs> um, they detonate the bomb on the aliens that were going to invade Earth, and which that's... look like Independence Day aliens too. So, uh, yeah, they mm. they kind of do mm. the fleshy inside ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. A little bit, kind of. I, 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 I see where you're going with it, and the day is saved. That yeah. world is pretty awesome looking, though. There's just like a giant eyeball in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> so wrong. <Yeah. laughs> Super Thulu. <laughs> uh, but that was Pacific Rim. And honestly, walking away from it, I am still as pleased as I was with it after I left the theater for the first time. I'm not sure we 100% sold it as well as we enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean... It, which is... That movie in a nutshell, because they didn't market it that well. It didn't do, like, gangbusters at the box office, but it should have. It did, like... Gangbusters? You never heard that term? It's a term. I don't know where it comes from, but it, it's a term. I'm going to assume gangbusters. It, it did really well. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I think it helped that China really bought a lot of tickets. Cause yes. Which I think ended up destroying the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Half of the movie is in Chinese with subtitles, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so this is the part of the show where we actually go ahead and do one creative thing because we've been analyzing something that has uh, already been created. Um, I have here the creativity dice. Um, yay. yay! Chuck and I will use Ed's uh, audio clip. Uh, <laughs> where So basically what happens here is I'm going to roll this dice and we get um, whatever we land on, we do one of these things. Is uh, reread the script as the guest chooses. 
uh, draw the movie poster or make it better. Recast the movie. Uh, play fuck Mary kill with the characters of the movie, not necessarily the actors. Uh, make a pornographic parody title. Uh, make up a new one if uh, one already exists. Roll up a uh, character sheet uh, through D and D of one of the characters in the movie. Uh, make up a new theme song for the movie, and uh, make a PowerPoint presentation pitch about how this movie probably got made. He's also very involved. Yeah, I was gonna say when I looked at this list, I'm like, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> Some <laughs> of these could. I mean, the best part is, is I can just hit the stop button, and nobody would ever oh. know that we hit the stop button. And then a month later, you turn in your uh, your, yeah, your <laughs> boardroom pitch. To be perfectly honest, we have a homework assignment, people. <laughs> <laughs> we should have done the PowerPoint presentation pitch, but I never got anything from anybody on that episode, so I'm going to assume it is lost in the annals of time. Um, oh, it was tried before? It, oh, so your guests actually don't necessarily come through sometimes with these. <laughs> I already see Ed going for the door. <laughs> no, no, just roll the dice. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, we were, theme song, theme song, theme song. No, something quick. Okay, here we go. I have five. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, make up a pornographic parody title. Oh, that's easy. Pacific Rim job. <laughs> I think that one's been done, though. Oh, that was a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> you got to make up a new one. All right. Atlantic Rim job. <laughs> no. That's the Asylum That's the Asylum one. version of yes, the exactly. Oh, my God. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Considering the actress in that movie, it practically was That born. is brilliant. <laughs> I love that you made a ripoff of a porn parody. <laughs> Of a, uh, oh, that's good. Right. Asylum, Asylum's gonna come for you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> think of some more. Think of some different ones. Um, let's see. I got one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slimy monster robot thrust. Slimy monster robot thrust. <laughs> uh, drop the mic. I'm done. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're at a loss. Yeah, too. I, I. You know. I'm, I'm, at a, I'm a little overloaded here. Uh, let's go with... I, I'm trying to play off of vibrators as robots. Thrust, yeah. And... <laughs> like, really, when you've achieved perfection, do you really keep going? <laughs> exactly. Yes, I'm going to try. What, are you uh, in Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, vibrations and slams. So I'm thinking... Okay, that didn't work. Uh... Or floundering. Yep, exactly, floundering a little bit. Exactly. Damn it, Ed. Sorry. I blame you. <laughs> well, maybe I need to take this one off because. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I, I've got it. Ed, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you get extra points for the, the layers upon ripoff and pornographic parody. <laughs> In that first one. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, I remember renting Atlantic Rim from the Blockbuster video. On that's, purpose? That's how long ago it was to see the crappy CGI and, the, oh my God, people in two, there was like three actors in different closets where they just changed the tubes around in the background and they were like, we're looking for the robot. And they had some B-level actor uh, in a control room saying, you're going the wrong way. And then the monster would be some CGI thing somebody paid $2 for. It was, was so bad. Was the control room the submarine set that they used yes, in like every yes, single movie? Yes, yes, it exactly was. <laughs> they make these movies in less than a week, it feels, and it shows, but they cash in. There was also the Terraformers mm -hmm. Asylum knockoff for Transformers. Have and... you seen their Cars knockoff? What's that one? No, it's like Cars. It's all CG, but on an Asylum budget. It's a with, kid's movie? With musical numbers in it. Oh, my yes. God. It no. exists. What's it called? Vehicles. I, believe, I think that's what it's called. Automobiles. Uh, no, that's it. It's automobiles. automobiles. <laughs> There's a whole joke of, like, what would the crappy sci-fi channel knockoff movie be titled for movies like Jurassic Park? It'd be Dinosaur Forest. Mm. And you could just go on. It's a drinking game almost. You can go on and on about these movies. What would they be called as a crappy uh, B-level version? Terminator be Robot Killer. <laughs> I, think I, have, I think they made that one in the 80s, actually. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right, uh, we have two minutes left. <laughs> All right. Um, so you guys want to go ahead and just uh, riff on what you guys, uh, what your projects are upcoming? Okay. Um, yeah, Ed, you said you were going to do some stuff. Yeah, what are you going to do, Ed? I'm going to 
go be more of a social media presence here probably in the next six months or so i got to may make... i recommend being charlie day for a little while <laughs> yeah okay we're gonna do a lot of stuff man it's gonna be six months of crazy it's gonna be fun first gotta move i gotta get out of here I gotta get out of hollywood because you can't be creative in hollywood man no not in this day and age oh my god so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back to sacramento probably and that's what i'm gonna make a whole green screen studio thing man it's gonna have a podcast stuff i got stupid space gun productions probably gonna change the name though and i'm gonna do a bunch of crazy fun stuff so look forward to that okay just keep an eye on out for that see you later Sean? I don't have a spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... Well. Just... Anyway, you know, um... So, back in the day before I came here, I did a lot of, uh, creative things. And once you work out here, you realize you don't have the money or resources or time to do creative things if you want to pay the bills. So, I'm paying the bills working on other creative, fun things. Well, I will say working on things. I'm not going to say creative or fun. And, uh, <laughs> once... You should probably say fun, though. Yeah. Once I go back to, uh, basically, I'm going to just tell it straight out. You want to be creative and you want to make things fulfilling and fun in life, go do it yourself. I'm just, don't depend on anyone else and don't try to get in another place somewhere hoping to climb a ladder. You're just going to get capped at some point. So go somewhere, do it yourself, invest money. There's Patreon accounts. There's all this fun stuff out there. Crowdfunding. Do, cr crowdfunding. Yeah, crowdfunding. Just be creative. Start drawing, start writing, get your idea out the ground now. Um, just promote it and get your friends to help you and you can do anything. And just, I'm just telling you, don't do the, the other way. <laughs> also, you should also consider doing uh, motivational, motivational speech. speech. That's, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> There are Herman. <laughs> tons and tons of art people out there. There is great creative passion out there. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately, we're all capped right now because of the climate. I'm just going to say the climate. That's the one word blanket statement right now. But I feel that we are on the cusp of breaking out of this bottleneck right now. And people are going to want to make fun, creative stuff again. It's coming. The 80s level of creativity is coming back so just wait for it i say less than a year we're going to start seeing it in mass and then the companies will come back you're going to get the toys again all this fun stuff's coming back we're at the end of this whatever this is the climate people all okay. 30 of my viewers are going to just be standing in applause right now <laughs> I'm just, that's how i feel and, and i'm yeah. just saying <laughs> i'm just saying it's coming people and i'm excited for what's coming but right now you just gotta, it's gotta be going just hang on <laughs> Sean, try and follow that. I dare you. <laughs> uh, like I said, I do YouTube reviews on uh, old comic books from the 90s. Uh, they're usually issues that I had growing up that I didn't read at the time. Because I would uh, go to the comic shop once every, like, four months. So you can never follow a story. Uh, this is basically looking back on those issues, finding out who the characters were and what I missed out on. And I'm also trying to build an audience for when I finally crowdfund my uh, sci-fi comic in the future. Very cool. See? Something to look forward to, people. Yeah. And I've seen Sean's work, and he hasn't paid me to say this. It's excellent. I actually rather enjoy your stuff. Yeah, I, I've seen a couple of things you posted, because uh, I'm such a... Uh, I look at your stuff on Facebook see, in secret all the time. Yeah, it sounds so, creepy. So yeah. <laughs> I want to see more, so... While I'm here, can I see some of your comics? Sure. Cool. <laughs> and uh, so they can go see their comics. I will uh, plug the channel here. Uh, thank you for listening to Bonus Commentary. Make sure to check us out on Patreon, Facebook, uh, Instagram, where you can see whatever it is I'm going to end up putting up there. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, I also, for some reason, have a Twitter. We, mm. uh, yeah. Me man, too. Yeah. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't appreciate that I have it. Um, also, be sure to check out uh, the rest of the Working On It Network channels. Uh, we have the uh, Easy XP gaming uh, bi-monthly, bi-weekly gaming channel where they just talk about the state of games that month. And uh, I think we're, I think that's it. And Ooh. the Return of the Chit Show, which I don't know too much about. Chit. <laughs> let chit. Me, chit. It's chit. Let me say one thing, not in the Charlie Day voice. Uh, yeah, Stupid Space Gun Productions to keep up with me whenever I do decide to blow up again. <laughs> also on Twitter, I'm at Sean Cromwell. And uh, at bonus commentary everywhere. Uh, guys, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got to sit down and watch this and do this. Yeah. Um, Let's watch Deep Rising next. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, My wife yeah. won't watch it with me anymore. <laughs> really? <laughs> She's, she can probably it's, quote it better than we it's can. It's like every other night. I'm like, you're going to miss out. You want to watch Deep Rising? <laughs> <laughs> miss out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good night.